Hi guys, and welcome to the lesson Metals on Reactivity. Metals and Reactivity. In today's lesson, the learning outcome is the experimental determination of the relative activity of metals with water, acids, and oxygen. So the reactivity of an element is an indication of how easily the atoms of that element, how easily the atoms will lose their electrons or gain their electrons. Lose or gain. When the metals, when metals react in particularly, they lose electrons. So reactivity is a general term for how an atom of that element loses or gains electrons, and when a metal reacts, it specifically loses electrons. Reactivity of metals is measure how easily the atom will lose their electrons, and this is shown here. So potassium is a metal, it will react with water to lose its electrons to become potassium hydroxide, hydrogen gas. We're going to look at this in more detail. So when metals react, as I mentioned, they lose electrons, and the reactivity is a measure of how easily they will lose their electrons. So if you have a more easily lose their electrons, it will have a higher reactivity. If you less easily lose your electrons, it will have a lower reactivity. And the reason why you'd lose electrons more easily is because you'd have a weaker attraction of the valence electrons to the nucleus. So that would mean they'd lose them more easily. So the electronegativity would be lower, meaning they would have less of a pull on the electrons. So here's an atom. The outer shell electrons, the valence electrons here, would have not much of a pull, so they got weak attraction to the nucleus, and with their weak attraction, they're not going to be pulled, which means they'll be lost, and that will make them more reactive. So as you move down that particular group, so down this group in group one, you can see that the elements become even more reactive. So sodium is the top of the group one almost. Potassium is underneath that, and the rubidium is down the wood at the bottom. It gets increasingly more reactive because they have less control out of, of their valence electrons as they have more shells and have a weaker attraction to the nucleus. As you move across, say, group 2, there is less of a reaction compared to group 1, but there is still uh, a reaction at room temperature. Slow or not at all. So as I mentioned, group 1 reacts vigorously. As you move down, they relax react less. So you can see here, increasing reactivity, you have sodium and potassium up the top, and we have platinum and gold, which is a further away to the right of the periodic table. So moving, here's a periodic table. Moving down, we have increase reactivity. And as we move left to right, we have decrease reactivity, decrease reactivity. The general reaction for how metals react with water is it's Given by the word equation, we've got metals as a solid, solid metal. With water as a liquid, they'll form a metal hydroxide, which is called aqueous. That means dissolved in water, and we'll have hydrogen gas formed as well. So that's the general formula for how metals react with water. An example of this may be sodium, solid sodium, reacting with water. So metals reacting with your water here, which will form the metal hydroxide. We have sodium and hydroxide. Hydroxide is the OH part there. It's the hydroxide part, and that's the metal. There, and then we have the hydrogen gas formed, which is H2. When we're looking at reactions of metals with acids, we have the general equation metals plus the acids will give you a salt, and it will give you the hydrogen gas. Again, the salt is aqueous or dissolved in water. An example may be magnesium and hydrochloric acid. So we have magnesium solid plus hydrochloric acid, which is the acid there, which gives you magnesium chloride. So that's the salt. So non-metal here is the chloride and the metal. When you add those two together in chemistry, we call them a salt. Non-metal and metal is a salt. And hydrogen gas is produced also. The final one here, we have a reaction of Metals with oxygen, so the metals are solid, plus oxygen forms metal oxides. An example of that would be iron, plus oxygen forms iron oxide. So there's the oxide component, and there's the metal component, and this is how it reacts with the metals. For the summary of the lesson, reactivity is defined by how easily atoms of an element lose their electrons, because or gain electrons, but particularly for metals, it's a loss of electrons. Reactivity of metals occurs with water, oxygen, and acids, and they react according to a specific set of equations, as I've been through. And reactivity increases as you move down a group in the periodic table because they have uh, greater ionization energy or weaker electronegativity. 
which increases as you move down the group and has a, has a less of attraction to the nucleus. And reactivity decreases across a period. So from left to right, you have a decrease in reactivity. But down the group, you have increase. These are the questions I'd like you to complete, questions one to three of chapter 3.3, page 65. Thanks for watching.